Now, just to piggyback on um, yesterday's lesson, we were looking at the birth of hip hop and the context and how um, the four elements of hip hop sort of evolved. Um, we're going to focus a little bit more just on the early DJs. And I did talk about the DJs already, but I just want to focus a little bit, just to review about those DJs because they are important. Um, so uh, I just want to talk about the, some of the main ones and um, I have a Spotify playlist um, for you to look at as well. Now we did talk about sort of um, how sort of the DJing thing became really popular and how, um, you know, re it was live music that was mostly played at clubs and, and on the radio and on TV and, and how when records were produced, then it was not only just live bands, but also you could just play a record over different recordings. Um, and then how that evolved to actually two records um, playing back and forth. Um, and a lot of that, um, happened in the Bronx, not just like in house parties. And I get these are teenagers um, having house parties, back to school parties, trying to, you know, make some money and having parties, um, doing birthday parties, playing at community centers. And then on top of that, they were actually doing block parties where they were playing outside um, and the power was coming from the lampposts that they were plugging into. Um, and then it became sort of big community events. Um, so um, that's sort of how it became popularized instead of just being in the home, but just sort of more for the, the whole community. So we talked again about how, um, how like the context of, of, of how DJing sort of um, evolved and, and, um, and how the idea of um, disc jockey was, was a, you know, the full term of what a, a DJ is. And, um, now, we talked a little bit about Cool Herc. So, again, I want to talk about some of the main um, key players that started this. Cool Herc is, is known as the father of, of hip-hop. So, Cool Herc was actually born in Jamaica, but he was raised in the Bronx. So, we talked about in 1973 how um, the idea of playing two records at the same time, two records, um, and at the same time going back and forth. And one of the things that um, Cool Herc had invented was um, the break and having like two identical records and then just playing one section like the break um so, you know the, kind of like the drum solo from one record and then it wasn't long enough and then going back to the other one and just repeating that over and over and over again with the two different records that itself made DJing an art form and made DJing um almost like an instrument right like you could actually create things out of out of records, right? So one of the first DJs to do this was DJ um, Cool Herc. And again, we talked about some of the context of like where this idea of the big block parties were um, were born. And and a lot of that was from Jamaica, right? With the, the same idea where they would have these parties and this, these music with these big speakers outside. And the idea of uh, the Jamaican idea of toasting, which is like an MC kind of like filling in that space where the between the, the DJs playing their records. Um, so DJ Cool Herc, he actually, uh, when um, he formed a group with the Herculoids. And uh, so the, so he was a sort of DJ part in the Herculoids, where it's like the MC kind of like, which evolved into rap part. And one of the most famous um, events that took place that uh, is DJ Cool Herc's uh, party at, on Sedgwick Avenue, which I think was his sister's birthday party. But that address is really famous at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. Grandmaster Flash, uh, he had a group with the Furious Five. And we talked about how Grandmaster Flash and his influence, he was very theoretical and mathematical about how um, DJing works. So he took the ideas that Cool Herb did about, you know, looping the, well, creating loops and, and repeating the backbeat and, um, and having the two different turntables. And he really perfected this and really was very scientific about it. And then he was a big showman, right? He was like, you know, he, he talked about how he was like, you know, scratching with his elbows and really, really flashy, right? That's probably why he was called Grandmaster Flash. Um, we also talked about African Bombada and, and how he was a um, very good writer and leader. And, and that's sort of what he contributed in terms of the DJing aspect and how he had won like an essay contest and had gone to Africa, which is hence why he, he calls himself Africa Bambada. And he came back with the idea of Zulu Nation. We talked about, about that. These DJs, um, it's not that they're replacing gangs or they have anything similar. They have some similarities to gangs, but um, they sort of occupied certain sort of areas in the Bronx. Um, 
But one of the most notable things is from Bambada is the Zulu Nation, which was, um, you know, had a lot of B-boys and had DJs and just, and it was sort of a, a, a an organization. It was very stressed out. Like they stressed it a lot that it was an organization, not a gang. And their message was peace and unity and love. And um, so a lot of, so Bambada was a real leader in bringing harmony um, in the Bronx through b-boying and DJing and and um, when we do graffiti we're going to see a lot of graffiti writers are actually were also um, part of Zulu Nation so all these things I mean sometimes you were a DJ and you're a b-boy and and you're a graffiti artist and you did a lot of different things and sort of went back and forth so um, another notable one was we talked about too was Grand Wizard Theodore where he actually invented the scratch and kind of happened by accident um when he was in his room, the story is he was practicing and his mom came in and asked him to turn it down. He put his hand on the record to stop it and it went back and forth and he heard that cool sound and hence the the, the scratch was invented, which is huge in, in DJing, right? So all of these sorts of things, it's, it's sort of the birth of something called turntablism, which is not just DJing. We think of a DJ as somebody that plays at a wedding and just is sort of in the background, kind of just playing records and it kind of one mix one song sort of overlaps the other and it gets everybody going. But the, the idea of a turntablism, if we think about the true authentic way that some of these first DJs actually used the turntables, they created something new out of these records. So um, the idea that turntablism, how it's different in a way from DJing is that the turntables are then their own instruments in their own right. And that's what we're going to learn next when we look at some of the techniques and we're going to create some of our own original pieces out of our virtual turntables.